Yep, I got my Pioneer all muddy. <laughs> but the fact that my Pioneer is muddy is not the important part. In fact, if you guys watch my videos any amount of time, you know that most of the time you see the 500, it's muddy. But then again, I drive it every day. The important thing about my 500 being muddy is the reason that it's muddy. And on this Appalachian Mountain Riders, I'm going to go over that reason and why a lot of U500 owners' prayers have finally been answered. Don't forget as well, you guys can always support my channel by buying your Appalachian Mountain Riders t-shirt as well as Appalachian Mountain Rider decals by going to AppalachianMountainRiders.com slash shop and placing your order today. So unless you guys are new to Appalachian Mountain Riders and this is the very first video of mine you've seen, you know through my Instagram posts, my posts on my Facebook page, not to mention I already have the install video up which you guys can watch here later, that I have had the privilege and honor of getting to test out one of Torque Masters Industries torque locker for the Pioneer 500. Now if you're a 500 owner, you know one of the downfalls to this little machine is that it has an open differential, meaning that even when you're in four wheel drive, usually only one wheel on the front will spin, which for a lot of situations that's fine, but given the short wheelbase and the small A-arms and the very, very limited suspension travel we have, a lot of times that means that we end up with only having three wheels on the ground at one time. Usually we get one or more up in the air. And then that usually tends to be the one that the open diff wants to send traction to. And it's sitting there spinning and so it's not getting us anywhere. And the reason why Honda went with an open diff on the front of the Pioneer 500 is because without the option of power steering, it does make it nice when you're locked in four wheel drive for maneuvering through woods, tight and arrows, because it still steers super easy even in four wheel drive. But a lot of you now, myself included, have just been hoping and praying and wishing whatever you were doing that some company would come out with a way to make this true four-wheel drive, meaning that we can lock the front differential in and get both front wheels spinning at the same time. So when that situation comes up that one is not touching the ground, then the one that is touching the ground will for sure have power. Well, Torque Masters Industries has answered our calls by developing the torque locker for the Pioneer 500. Now, this is a tried and true locker that they've used in Can-Ams and in various other machines throughout the years. So we know that the locker itself is going to work. So the question is, how well does it work with the Pioneer 500? So I've put my 500 through vigorous tests both with the open diff and with the torque locker installed to give you guys an idea if the torque locker is something you're going to need for your Pioneer 500. And since I know most of you that are interested in the torque locker are interested because you like to play in the mud, then we might as well start off big by hitting the mud holes first. <laughs> Good little warm up. I got a little nervous, didn't know if I was going to make it through that or not, but uh, another thing to see is if it'll go through a little easier with a locker, but. Test number one, good. All right, so the first mud hole, not even a problem, but it really wasn't a big problem when I didn't have the locker. This guy, however, we did get stuck on and have to winch out.
Now granted, that was mostly because I got high centered. So the locker may not help at all with this hole anyway because of this, the way this is really rutted out. I'm gonna try to stay out of the ruts off to the side to see if I can pull my way through and not get stuck in this again by getting high centered, but we'll see, let's find out. If, it, if anything, you'll be able to see both wheels working like they should now. Can you... Well, as I figured, we're gonna have to winch out again. That has nothing to do with torque locker. I'm sure you guys can see how the wheels are spinning. The bad thing is, is there's nothing under the wheel as I am completely high centered again. So we'll get the old winch out, get her pulled out and we'll move on to the next hole. some uh, pretty slick clay mud there. That's some good stuff. If this side would quit coming up like that, you'd be all right. I didn't manage to get it over but as you guys will see from the footage as soon as that one wheel came off and the wheel that was spinning so the other wheel that was actually on the ground was doing absolutely nothing so it took a couple tries probably I might have made it on the first try had I had a locker so all right we're back here to my original old mud hole nemesis I'm gonna try to hit it the same way I did at first on the first run through here and hit it more over this side see if I can't make my way up over. It has rain, so this is a little softer. I think we'll be good as long as I don't high center again. With the, uh, the torque locker installed, I think that's gonna have to be my only concern is not getting high centered. So let's see how she goes. It makes me look better because I was claiming the whole time that had I had a locker I would have made it up over that first time no problem as you can see that's exactly what the case was so we know a locking differential is going to be a big benefit in the deep mud holes and the soupy goopy messes you can get into so the question is for those of us that don't really like to get into a lot of deep mud very often how are the characteristics of the locker going to be just out on the trail. I know personally myself, a lot of the trails I ride, I lock it in four wheel drive before I start and it's locked in four wheel drive all day as I'm cutting past through the woods. So we're gonna do just a couple quick tests here to see if a locking differential affects the normal handling of the Pioneer 500 in any way. We're gonna start here with just a quick, simple turning radius test. We're gonna do the test in two wheel drive, four wheel drive with the factory open diff and then we'll do it again with the torque locker installed. 
So what I'm going to do here is mark a line as my start for my back tire. I'll do the, the turn and we'll see where we end up and also see how big of a turning radius we have by using the good old measure wheel. Alright, two wheel drive, test. Alright guys, so right here is the inside of our tire in two-wheel drive. Let me clear the old wheel and let's see what our distance is here. So we're at a 14 foot, 6 inch turning radius two-wheel drive. And again, this is with inch and a half spacers and with 27 inch tires. And as you guys can see by the mark we put on, we stopped at the exact same spot we started at. So we'll use this again for our next test. We'll go ahead and do the same thing in four-wheel drive with the factory open front differential. So guys, as you can see, I am pretty much right on my mark. And as my camera operator, my gorgeous, my beautiful, my intelligent wife said, as she was watching my outer mark over there, I ran over it too. So as far as the difference in turning radius in four wheel drive with an open differential, it is exactly the same. Which brings us to the reason why Honda puts an open differential in the front of this anyway and that is simply for ease of steering when you're in four-wheel drive. Keep in mind the Pioneer 500 does not come with power steering. You have to add that as an aftermarket accessory. So the reason they make the front an open front and without the ability to lock in four-wheel drive is to keep the steering nice and light and easy. Remember this is a, a quick nimble little trail buggy that's made to just zip right around in the woods and the open differential definitely helps with that. So now that we have the torque locker installed, we're going to give it a test here to see if that ratchet system and how it locks and unlocks the front wheels will allow us to maintain our turning radius or if it's going to increase it. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'll mark a mark right here by our inside of our rear tire. And we'll do a circle. Two wheel drive! So again, we landed almost right back exactly where we started. Now the reason why I'm doing it in two-wheel drive is again with the torque locker, it pretty much ties in the front wheels even in two-wheel drive. They're kind of tied together, but when there's no power being sent to them, it allows it to ratchet a lot easier. So we'll go ahead and check to see if that affects our steering right in the middle. So we're at 14 foot 9, so there is a couple inches difference. We'll do it again in four wheel drive and see if it makes even more of a difference. So you can see here how we've slid up this way from our line. I'm actually sitting on the mark I made, and the reason is is here was the two-wheel drive we're out here with the four-wheel drive so the whole machine was kind of slid this way as we turned all right so we are at 16 foot 10. so we added about a two feet to our turning radius in four-wheel drive now again with the machine this little i mean you can see our circle here that's still a pretty tight turning radius, but having the torque locker is going to make a difference in how sharply we can turn, which obviously is something you're going to expect when you have something like a torque locker that has the ability to 
truly lock in both front wheels. Now one of the bigger benefits for your average driver with the torque locker is going to be when you're going up hill climbs. This particular hill climb here is one where my little Pioneer 500 used to struggle coming up and it's not because it's super steep but this is super soft soil here and I always had to hit this in second gear with speed to get it up over. I made the mistake in the past of trying to come up over, over this in low gear and in four wheel drive I get to about almost to the top and my wheels would just spin and I'd dig in and sink. So now we're going to try it with a torque locker. I'm going to hit this on slow on purpose to see if I'm able to just to slowly bore my way up over now that we have the torque locker fully engaging all four wheels. So there, in low gear, going nice and slow, she just chewed her way right up over. You probably were able to see how this is still nice and soft. So very, very impressed with the torque locker. Even if you're not a mudder, but you do a lot of trail riding with a lot of hills and a lot of loose soil, then you're definitely going to enjoy having the torque locker on your Pioneer 500. So I've put over 60 miles on my torque locker just riding through wooded trails like this. And guys, I can tell you, honestly, if I didn't stop there take the time to think about the locker being installed I didn't hardly notice it two-wheel drive there's absolutely no difference in steering feel and in four-wheel drive it is very very hard to tell but again I have power steering but I think you guys without power steering it's not going to be too bad either I unplugged it and rode around a little bit without my power steering hooked up and it was tolerable it wasn't too bad it didn't make my arms too tired at all now it's one thing for me to just throw some footage up there of me driving through the woods and saying that the steering is still very very easy even with the torque locker but as far as you guys know I could just be talking out my butt bragging up one of my sponsors so in an attempt to show you that this is my true unbiased opinion I'm gonna try to show you guys here how easy this is to steer even with the torque locker installed so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it in low gear I'm gonna creep along around five miles an hour and with my power steering, I can easily one finger turn this lock to lock. And that was before I installed the torque locker. So now that I have the torque locker installed, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to creep along probably about five miles an hour, try to stay under 10 anyway. And I'll take one finger and we'll turn one way lock back. And as you guys can see here, I am on kind of this packed gravel type uh, road here. And we'll see if we can see a difference in how it steers now with four-wheel drive and gauge if it's a lot harder i'm obviously not going to be able to probably use one finger but let's find out how this goes and we'll see how the steering is affected so um, we're going to go in low so i can keep it nice and slow let me get up here to about 10 miles and or about five miles an hour and you guys can see i can still easily one finger turn my machine without too much strain. Whoops, my finger didn't slip out. So again, in two-wheel drive, a torque locker, there is no difference in feel from the stock open diff in two-wheel drive, obviously, because there's no power going to the front wheels. So let's head back here to where I started. So I'm going the exact same way both times. I'm going slightly uphill here. Now let me put her in four-wheel drive. Now I'm gonna back up here. I heard the click, so we're in four-wheel drive. I'm going to do the same exact thing now that I'm in four-wheel drive. We'll go into low and I'm going to get up to speed and see if I can still one finger steer it. So there we are about five and guys still one finger steer. Now you will see when I let go it is quicker to go back to center because again both wheels are turning and trying to give power. So yes as you would figure there is a little more resistance but I can still easily turn with one finger with it in four-wheel drive and the torque locker engaged and sending power to both wheels. Now I didn't forget about you non-power steering guys either. I'm going to come in here and unplug my power steering so that it is not working. And I should now, hey where'd the other plug go? So that's unplugged. 
I'm gonna hop back in here and throw my hood back on. Gonna do this all one take too, so you guys know I'm not cheating. Now, as you can imagine, the steering is obviously gonna be harder without power without the power steering plugged up. Again, I want to stress this, I'm gonna have a harder time steering than you guys that don't have a power steering unit hooked up because that adds extra resistance the motor and everything that comes with that when it's not plugged in but let's do the same thing here i'm in two wheel drive again let's go in low i don't know if i'll be able to one finger it we'll see get up to about five. Oh, i can oh my god oh, gonna have to two finger it oh and it's a little tricky there's two fingers and again this isn't really to show you how hard it's going to be to steer with the torque locker and two-wheel drive but this will give us a baseline to see if there's any difference in four-wheel drive so we're not really looking at this if it's going to be harder to steer in four-wheel drive or not because again I have all that extra crap that's hooked up to our steering column giving extra resistance to what you guys that don't have power steering is going to hook up so the thing in question here is how much harder is it in four-wheel drive than it's two-wheel drive so let's get her in four-wheel drive let me creep ahead here let's get up let's see if i can still two finger five oh no see so you can I three finger it oh so it's a little tricky here it is pretty tough i'm having to use both hands to turn it lock to lock. So I hope this footage has been a help to you guys to showcase what the torque locker can do and how it can transform the Pioneer 500. And I hope this quick little review, this little demonstration is enough to help you guys determine whether or not you want one for your machine. My personal opinion, I think this is the best thing that has come along for the Pioneer 500 thus far. And I think it's something that even if you think you might not need it, having it in your machine for that one or two rare occasions you actually do, you're gonna love it and it's going to well be worth the cost of it. So unless you're someone that is never in wooded trails, you use your Pioneer around the farm, you hardly ever put it in four wheel drive, probably really don't need this. But if you're someone that uses your four-wheel drive a lot, even if you're not in deep mud, but you're just in tricky trails, you're definitely going to love having the torque locker. Now, your non-power steering guys, yes, it is going to be harder to steer. That's going to be a given. But I don't think it's going to be so much so that it's not going to be worth having. The steering on this guy is nice and light from the factory without power steering, which is one of the reasons Honda doesn't offer it. So the little extra work you have to do in four-wheel drive is not going to be to where you're going to regret getting it let's put it that way so make sure you guys if you have a stock machine without power steering and you got the torque locker and installed it make sure you come back to this video and comment below how the steering is without any power steering stuff hooked up and again i just want to thank everyone at torque masters industries for finally stepping up and showing a little support for the pioneer 500 I want to thank Chuglin on the Honda Side by Side Club and his efforts to get Torque Masters to come out with this product. He had a very, very large role in his persistence and pretty much bugging them to death is one of the main reasons we now have this option for the 500. So thank you, Joe. I want to thank JWB on the Honda Side by Side Club as well for his efforts in testing and making sure the torque locker is up to quality standards for its release and also for the excellent ride up that he did for Torque Masters Industry. So if you guys order a torque locker between my installation video and JWV's very detailed write-up that comes with the torque locker, you should be able to install this yourselves, no problem, as long as you're somewhat handy with the wrench. And I know a lot of you guys have some pretty, pretty wild builds on your Pioneer 500 and hit a lot of deep mud. So I'm very anxious to see if you guys get a torque locker, how, you, how it transforms your machines as well. So make sure if you haven't already, you join my Appalachian Mountain Riders Facebook page as well as my new Riders of the Appalachian Mountain Facebook group where you guys can interact with each other a little easier. The link for both of those will be in my description below. Now that I have my locker installed, my test and review video is done. 
I can just enjoy some playing around in it now. So until next time, guys, keep on riding. Appalachian Mountain Riders is brought to you in part by the following. The Honda Side-by-Side -Side Club, because who knows the machines better than the owners that use them every day. Walker Evans Racing, when the path requires more than just ordinary, head on over to walkerevansracing.com. Torque Locker from Torque Masters Industries. When you want to explore the unexplored, head on over to torquemasters.com. And by my gracious supporters on Patreon.